So, this is the next phase of your offshore structures. So, this uh, decayer decision has to be taken. Now, this is basically dependent on what is called top side facilities. So, in this offshore engineering, you will come across this word top side facility. Now, what are these top side facilities? So, this is basically based on segregation of deck area. Now, this is similar to your ship general arrangement drawing. So, whenever you designing the deck area of an offshore platform, you should what comes to your mind is your GA drawing, similar to GA or general arrangement drawing of ships. Now, on what conditions you draw up your GA plan? What are the prime considerations? Lines plan you have most of you have done, but in lines plan you have done from offset table, not from fundamental ship design principles. Now, you te tell me on what considerations you make your GA plan or GA drawing of ship. So, this is basically the spatial arrangement. How you are going to arrange the various modules on the deck. So, spatial arrangement of deck modules. So, this is your prime consideration. Now, this is based again on deck equipment layout. So, this is your primary consideration. So, uh, in the Next class, I will give you a list of these deck equipment, what are these deck equipment, uh, how you are going to lay them out. So, this is primarily done by the chemical engineers or your mechanical engineers, they will tell you and the capacity of your deck equipments. or rather you write deck machinery. So, suppose you have been told to draw the main deck plan. So, what, what are the items you are going to show? So, this is similar to that main deck plan of your ship. So, here in, you know, in the in this diagram you can see the various deck modules, but unfortunately the machinery you have not has not been shown. So, here you can see the deck house along with the heavy deck, then you have the drilling derrick, the ash stack, there is a crane. So, how you are going to house all these elements on the 
deck area. So, deck area is a deciding factor on the area of requirement of these different modules. Now, not only you have to decide on the area, but also on the distances between the various modules. Uh, example I can tell you is the flare stack. So, you can see the flare stack is far away from your this deck house because of the heat radiation from the flame. So, you have to keep the crew and the personnel away from the heat or from catching fire. So, this also has to be farther away from the oil processing and storage facilities. So, they have a separate which is called they make a coffer dam which has not been shown. I will tell you next class. So, the segregation of the deck facilities they are not done in a random way, but there is a definite reason on the segregation of the various facilities because of what main reason of segregation of spaces. of different spaces. So, the different spaces uh, you will find are in ships when you draw your GA what are the different spaces that you segregate. First you segregate the engine room, then the cargo space that is your hold, then your accommodation. So, similarly here you do the segregation of different spaces. So, the primary spaces are drilling area. where if you are here doing drilling and nowadays I told you, you you can do both concurrent drilling as well as production. You separate drilling area from your production area. Next is your accommodation. The accommodation cannot you cannot have accommodation on top of your derrick, is not it. So, that has to be separate from the drilling and production area and far away from the gas flare. Next you have live boat embarkation. gas flare. So, that is the gas that is coming out from the oil that is ignited. So, normally if you go into an oil oil field, you can see the fire, the flame that is coming from the oil wells. You go to any oil field, Bombay Hoy, Gujarat, Ankleshwar and the night you will find the sky is red because of the flame the coming from all these wells. So, that is called the glass flare, gas flare or gas flare stack. The live, live boat embarkation area is also to be separately thought about. So, this is the, the um, so called main deck of the platform or the deck area of the platform. So, you start from that. So, your design actually starts from calculation of the wave loads, the other environmental loads and the prime which you should not for forget is the water depth. So, that is a deciding factor for your underwater truss. So, underwater truss is also sometimes called a Underwater truss also it is sometimes called a template. Now, what is the meaning of a template? Underwater truss is also called a template and template means it is a pile driving guide. Why it is called a pile driving guide? template is a 
pile driving glide. So, that means you can see from this diagram the example is you see this is a the underwater truss. So, it is basically holding down the what holding down the deck along with the deck modules your derrick um, so called other uh, uh, weight items at a certain fixed location on the sea. Now, the deck should not vibrate or have tremendous amount of sway, neither it should, should be swept away bodily from one place to another. That is, there should not be rigid body displacement, is not it? Otherwise, your conductor pipes, marine risers are simply going to tear off from the or separate from the deck, is not it? So, the truss should be strong enough to hold down the deck against your environmental load. So, that is one of the prime conditions and the other prime condition is template is a pile driving drive. So, so here you can see the sleeves etcetera from which you can drive the piles. Now, if you do not have this so called underwater truss or template that means, just like you drive a nail one pile will go like this vertically down other will go like this in all sorts of directions it will go. So, this the piles are normally driven in an orderly fashion along a fixed direction. So, to prevent the piles from going uh, in the any haphazard way and finally, breaking down. So, this is prevented by the template or the underwater truss. So, it is a pile driving guide and this serves to reduce what pile deflection, pile deflection and damage. while pile driving. Have you seen pile driving? If you go into the site for any large tall building, you will see pile driving is normally done with the help of pile hammers. So, there is a hammer which comes on top of the pile and the pile is driven down into the soil. So, similar pile driving operation has to be done for offshore platform. So, before you join the deck along with the truss, you have to literally drive the piles through your sleeve or columns if the if the columns are relatively short by means of a pile driving hammer by pile driving pile drivers or this is called pile driving hammers. Now, when you are doing this, there is a tendency if you do not hold down the pile, there is a tendency for the pile to get deflected and ultimately break or damage. So, in order to prevent that, you build this kind of a complicated structure. So, one reason of the truss is of course, to uh, ward off your to resist the environmental external load. The other is, so truss, function of truss is how many? Number one is resist environmental loads. Now, these environmental loads are many, not simply the maximum of course, is your wave load which I will give you later on the magnitude can be of the order of say few thousand ton meter. So, resist environmental loads of waves the, the primary load, then you have current. What else? The other is your earthquake. So, these will come onto the uh, the truss of the jacket resist environmental loads. Next is function of truss is a pile guide. Now, 
you know, according to the number and disposition of the piles. You, you have to build your tri, uh, truss according to also the number of piles. Suppose you do not require so many piles, then you can reduce the size of the truss or if you have say number of piles that will be more. Here the main column piles are 1, 2, 3, 4. If you have more number of piles, then also you have to increase this and you have to have more columns etcetera. So, that will change my structure configuration of the pile. So, that is one primary reason is the pile is also a um, pile guide also is a deciding factor on the uh, nature of the truss. So, pile guide uh, next is 3 is what vertical deck load or vertical deck load support. So, these are some of the functions of the truss. So, the underwater truss is the last point is this, uh, this uh, what I was talking about is this vertical deck load support. So, if you want to um, go ahead with this, you have to draw a deck general engine layout. Now, simply doing this layout is not sufficient. What else do you require? Now, remember that you are building a structure, you are not building uh, something which is not having any function. Uh, so, the general engine layout is basically dependent on two factors. One is size and 2 is what? Weight. Weight of deck machinery items or rather you write deck items. Size and weight. There are two governing parameters on deciding the nature of the deck, the layout of the deck and the size of the deck. Now, the weight is an important factor, why? Because weight increases stress levels, weight increases stress levels on deck. So, this other governing factor is called the allowable stress. Allowable, what is your allowable stress uh, of the deck? So, that is given in various rule books. What is your allowable stress? So, similar to your the Hull Gada stress calculation. So, whatever items you are having on the deck, they should not increase the deck stress beyond a certain limit. If it increases, then you have to increase the plating thickness and also the supporting st structure. So, deck normally you have the modules on top, you have deck modules. supported. Now, there is a technical which is called supported on deck substructure. This is called a substructure that is structure below the main deck. Now, this deck substructure is a truss form of structure. Truss form. 
uh, here of course, you are not able to see this. So, this is truss form and this truss is welded directly to welded directly to top of columns, top of columns by stabbing cones. Uh, this is not shown in the figure, you know. So, actually you have to position the deck, deck normally comes as a separate module. So, I told you you have to make the truss and the deck separately and you find the deck is then assembled in the shipyard, the different modules are brought together, say flare stack, drilling etcetera and all this will come and then this comes as a separate deck, this is called a deck substructure. So, this is your truss and below this truss you have stabbing cones. Now, these actually they mate with the top of the columns of your underwater truss. So, you can see that the, this kind of erection at sea is a very tricky affair and it has to be done very precisely. So, this is your truss. So, this is deck substructure. And these are called stabbing cones. And these are welded to the columns. So, this is how your deck is joined with the truss and this whole operation is done in the afloat condition. So, deck is joined to truss in afloat mode. So, all this is you if you see with your eyes, you see the operation, it is quite interesting. So, your waves, the wave height will come somewhere here. So, yet the mean wave, mean wave height you take this, this is called an air gap. So, you have to maintain certain air gap above the mean sea level. So, this is your mean sea level. Why? The reason is the waves should not come and crash on the deck because it will disturb the deck operations and also it will create deck wetness. That is the crew will not like to go from one place to another on a wet deck and be swept away overboard. So, that is you maintain certain air gap. So, this height is also taken care of in the design for your truss. You have to keep the deck certain meters, normally I think 10 or 15 meters above the water level. So, deck joined to truss in afloat mode. Now, here actually jackets you find there are two types. So, I told you the water depth is a prime deciding factor on the size of the jackets. So, based on that you have jackets two types. So, 
So, the first type it is the smaller one, uh, they call it I think there is a special name. Anyway, so, primarily you say that this is first one I think is called barge bone. and the other type is called self floating. So, distinctly you will find these two type of jackets. Now, the barge bone ones, these are the smaller categories or smaller jackets. Now, these, these the name comes from the type of launching that you are going to. Now, self floating are the larger jackets. So, jacket fabrication that is the underwater truss fabrication is uh, quite simple that is you make the flat panels, then you cut the pipes to size and then you weld on horizontally and then you rotate it vertically and join. So, okay, so this is unlike your ship hull surface, your ship hull surface you will find lot of curvature on the hull. So, that has to be taken care of which you of course, you do not find here. So, there you, you are getting some relief, but here actually the more problem with these jackets are during the launching phase. Launching and transit. Now, jacket by itself they will not be able to move from your shipyard to site, is not it? Because jackets are not ship shaped, jackets are not ship shaped. Now, this ship shape has certain advantages. Now, what is the basic advantage? So, it is more resistance friendly that is the power requirement is there. Another thing is it can counter your waves during transit mode. The transit is an important transit is transit to site and you the offshore site can be few hundreds or thousands of kilometers from your shipyard. Say you are building a platform somewhere in the Norway in and you are transporting the jacket to Gulf of Mexico. So, you have to have the Atlantic Ocean in between. So, now in the transit mode the this is a more of a, uh, here actually your naval architectural calculations will come. So, sea motions during transit. What is this? This you have to calculate. So, uh, most of you I do not think you have done the seaking course, you have to do a lot of calculations when you are moving the jacket from shipyard to site that is calculation of sea keeping or sea motions. In now the transit, transit is going to take place 
for several months transit or this is called tow considerations. So, the naval architects they will be bothered about they are more bothered about this launching phase of the jacket and the transit phase of the jacket or the towing phase of the jacket that is where the offshore companies will go into higher your services. So, transit at tow con uh, or tow considerations these are based on sea motions or sea motion calculations. sea motion calculations to be done for a particular seaway. So, all your hydrodynamics that you are uh, learning from your waves and all that uh, calculation done for a particular seaway for a particular season. So, you, for the particular season at which your jacket is going to be transported or towed, you have to find out the maximum wave height. So, this information you can get from C spectra. So, we have not discussed about this aspect in your the offshore engineering. So, next we will talk about this spectra which is coming for a particular seaway. Now, from this you have to find out your wave height and period. So, normally the towing operation is done in done in calm weather you avoid storms so this you have to get information from the meteorologist when you are going to tow the jacket so wave height and period you have to calculate from the sea spectra for that particular route in a particular season and then you go for transit or towing, towing mode of the jacket. Now, in the towing mode, what are the considerations? Tow consideration, we have done this practical uh, calculations of tow. Now, the tow is similar to your mooring consideration. Say your platform, that is, say this is your jacket. It's typically long structure, isn't it? Now, are you going to tow it by one tug, two tugs, four tugs, or how many tugs? Uh, what is going to the power requirement of these tugs? So, normally you will find at all the four corners, you there is one tug and tow. So, you have to calculate how many tugs will be required and what is their towing power. So, jacket normally is pretty large. So, you are towing a large jacket and this is a self floating jacket. Now, you calculate. So, this is tug 1, tug 2. So, why you require so many tugs? Now one tug can do the job, is not it? Tow speed.
glucose feed normally. Three to five knots. Why? Any tow that is you are towing a tanker also, you do not tow it at a more than say 5 knots. One is the requirement of power, of course, you will say you require more power if you tow it at a larger speed, and the other is what? Can you guess? You should have minimum motions. Minimum motions during tow. Now your tow force is large. Obviously, the force will be large, and your speed and velocity will be more. So the the structure will go at a high speed and will have more motions. So you restrict tow motions to three to five knots. And ships have been lost during tow also. I have known ships which have been towed from Kagara port going to Kangla in Gujarat, <laughs> where, where they are crossing Tamil Nadu, the barge has gone below the sea. Because he did not, the pilot of the vessel or the pilot of the in charge of the tug, he did not know all this. And the vessel is started. So, normally you tow a small vessel, as a small vessel. So, one tug was towing, you know. And this vessel started going in this, that is, yawing in a large extent. Not only that, it started rolling also. Sway and roll was more so much that the vessel is finally capsized. So, these are some of the dangers when you come, so while being towed. Now, these four tugs you have are given at the four corners in order to prevent rotation of the tow. So, the corners, so this is similar to anchoring of a vessel, you know. So, you anchor at the four corners to prevent rotation. So, that you have to calculate from this equation that is the moment of inertia, mass moment of inertia, sorry, that is I phi double dot plus C phi dot plus K phi, that should be your external force in V in some sin or cosine form. Yeah, but this K is given, K is from moving wire stiffness or Tow rope stiffness. So, this is a complex calculation, is not it? So, in your sea keeping class, you will be required to calculate all this. So, this is, a, um, uh, this is similar to your vibration, this is your equation of motion. So, you formulate your equation of motion and find out the displacements and angle of rotation. So, tow calculations are basically your sea keeping calculations. Now, this is one example, uh, your fundamentally sea keeping calculations. Now, how the, the in tow how many motions are all six motions will come? There is surge, sway, your roll, heave, pitch will come. But in this case, you do not bother about so much about heave. Now, uh, heave is related to what? 
in this case E is related to free board. free board during tow. Now, this has been prescribed from rules. So, when, when you are going to some offshore company, you look up ABS for transportation of jacket self floating and on top of barges. Now, ABS gives you the prescribed free board, free board requirements are given here along with what free board with minimum stability requirements. minimum stability requirements in transit mode. So, either you have to do your fundamental calculations, your sequing calculation from your equation of motion and you have to check with ABS rules for mobile offshore drilling units. So, he is related to your free board. Next of all the motions will be there. So, motions have to be brought down to the minimum in order to prevent capsize. So, this is a very, very important calculation. The next consideration is the other prime consideration is stability calculation. Stability during tow. Now, uh, that means, the, you know, whenever you are towing a platform, I think we do not have sufficient time. See, this is your self floating jacket, a large part of the jacket will be above the water. You unnecessarily do not submerge a large portion of the jacket below the water. Why? So, this is the self floating jacket in tow. Now, you can see from this diagram that now your free board is essentially this much. Yeah, self floating jacket. So, this underwater part of the column is below the water that is giving you a buoyancy and this is your essentially your free hold because bracing members are you just see that this is a ship and this is your deck and you have a deck structure that is all. Now, here you will find that a large exposed area is to the wind your windage area is pretty large. Now, this causes your wind hitting moment. So, if you consult ABS rules, you will find there is a area requirement, area under the wind hitting arm and the writing arm. So, this is your I think displacement Z. And this is your angle. 
heel angle. So, there is a proportionate area given under this So, area under wind healing should be more or less to be there is a specified ratio to be less than area under GZ curve, is not it? So, this is of the order of uh, ABS I think gives some value I have forgotten this you have to check with ABS. So, this is the stability during tow. So, first is your motion calculation during tow. So, this is number 1 which you have to do from C keeping calculations and number 2 is calculation of stability. Both intact Now, this is your dynamic stability, intact and dynamic. So, both calculations you have to make. Intact stability is calculation of G m, how much is going to be G m value and dynamic stability you find out this delta G area under G z curve. Now, these are two governing factors. So, all these calculations if you are employed by these offshore companies or shipyard they will tell you to do. The other one is uh, stability and uh, motions during two and the third one is of course, your resistance calculation. So, all your naval architecture funda is going to be tested just if you when you are transporting a jacket platform from shipyard to site. So, resistance calculation that means you have to do because uh, the jackets are pretty huge and they are floating basically on two columns. Now you Suppose you want to do not want to tow like this, you want to tow with the larger portion of the jacket, jacket submerged, but this is very risky. But sometimes they also do this kind of operation. Then you can tow it like this also. The smaller jackets sometimes they they try to float in this manner. So, you can see from this diagram that the larger portion of the jacket is under the water. Now, here the risk is the freeboard is pretty small. And here if you tow it like this even if you have mm, larger waves coming you know you can the this uh, this is also the buoyant legs or buoyant columns uh, gives buoyancy to some extent. These columns are made pretty large in diameter in order to give buoyancy to the ja jacket during tow. So, this is the major part of your self floating jacket. Now, when you do this, you know, it is being towed in this fashion, that means there is not sufficient freeboard or sufficient intact volume above the water surface. And here, there is a tendency for the jacket to sink in case of adverse weather, but sometimes, but the favorable condition is that the um, rolling motion is diminished because 
the above the water exposure to wind is not there, is not it. So, this is one favorable condition, but your resistance is going to be high. Your resistance is going to be high and normally that is the reason why you do not pull the jacket at more than say 3 to 5 knots. 3 to 5 knots toe speed. And resistance in this cat, uh, in, uh, in such a slow speed, you obviously you will not be having much of wave resistance, but major component of resistance will be viscous resistance. resistance is viscous. So, there is a lot of viscous drag. So, this is viscous means frictional drag. Now, this you have to find out from experiments or you have to calculate from surface area and the speed etcetera. So, normally there is a complex calculation. So, these are some of the considerations that you have to um, do before you are transporting the jacket. The other calculations that you have to make is launching calculation. Now, launching I have told you there are two types, one is the barge bone variety that is use of launch barge. Now, launch barges have certain advantages, now what is that advantage? Now, your jacket is not ship shaped, is not it? Uh, you are transporting an object which is floating in the water, but it is not having, is neither it is motion friendly nor it is resistance friendly. Now, if you transport it on top of a barge, you are getting some advantage of the ship shape. Say, this is barge bone. But the problem with this is that you have to dedicate a barge separately for transportation of a jacket. Now, normally the one end of the jacket will be sticking out of the barge you do not make a barge which will accommodate the full length of the jacket. So, this is an example of a launch barge. So, you have to first you have to bring this jacket onto the barge and the when the jacket goes to sight, then you have to tilt this barge. 
then there otherwise your jacket is not going to come up your body. So, there are certain mechanics which you have to calculate during this is called jacket launching. jacket launching and after you come to site you have to do another operation is this called up ending now in from this diagram if you see that means you till the barge obviously the jacket you cannot take off from this end because of the the wheelhouse of the barge so, the jacket normally slips off the barge from this end and this is going to tilt about a beam which is called a rocker arm. Now, this narrower end of the jacket is where you have to, the deck is normally welded at this end, but this end is you will be going down into the water first isn't it. Now, if you are not careful that means, this end is going to strike your seabed if it is shallow water. So, this end normally you tie it by means of a rope onto a crane barge. So, this end will go down and then this end has to be brought out of the water. So, that process is called the process of up ending of jacket. So, again in this mode you have to do your stability calculations. So, next class we will talk about this the what precautions you have to take. Okay, thank you.